Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we're talking about three different types of goblet squats with the kettlebell, and then we might throw in the dumbbell versions as well and talk about core contraction. Three major versions of kettlebell goblet squats. The first two are symmetrical versions of this squat. These uh, squats are done different ways for different uh, training effects. First version we are going to do is we are going to pick the kettlebell up. We're going to put our arms directly underneath it. We're gonna hold the body of the kettlebell in our hands and we're essentially gonna look through the top window. We get the kettlebell up, we put our hands underneath, we look through the window, we close our core, bringing our elbows all the way together. We squat all the way down. We lean back as far as we can. We drive straight up until our legs are straight, tucking our tailbone, squeezing our booty. Anytime you load something in front of the body, you will force the back of the body to contract. So this looks very much like the dumbbell equivalent. So the dumbbell equivalent of this squat is holding the dumbbell directly in front of you in a similar way. Arms all the way together, kettlebell in front. Squat all the way down, lean back away from the bell, drive straight up. This kettlebell version of the goblet squat is almost exactly the same as the dumbbell squat. So as long as the weight is in front of you, you're forcing more muscles to contract by uh, levitating that thing in front of you. The further out an object gets in front of you, the harder the muscles in the back of your body have to contract. It's pretty hard to push a dumbbell out or a kettlebell straight out and use it that way. That's the club bell exercise, which will be a different video. The second version of the goblet squat is the version that I use the most because it is something that is unique to kettlebells and club bells, which does not really mimic with either a barbell or a dumbbell. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the kettlebell up. We are gonna hold it by the horns or the edge of the handle with the globe on top. This turns it essentially into the same dynamics as a really short club. So let's pick the kettlebell up, turn our hands over, pick it up, uh, shoulders down, arms at 90 degrees. The kettlebell should not be touching the body. Push it away from the body, squeeze your elbows all the way in until they're touching your sides, roll your shoulder blades back and down, and then we are going to squat. Bring the corners of your elbows out to the insides of your knees. Push out with your elbows, squeeze in with your knees, lift your chest up nice and high to straighten the spine, and then stand all the way up until your legs are straight. Good. So that is the bottoms up version of the goblet squat. One of my favorite versions of the goblet squat because it's not mimicked by the barbell or the dumbbell. So trying to do that version of the kettlebell squat with a dumbbell would just be holding the dumbbell straight in front of you, but there's no lever, right? So it changes the way your arms fire. It changes from actively controlling a lever, which causes these muscles in the arms to engage and then pulls the lats and the core deeper into the process into just holding it in front of you, very much like a Zercher squat. So we get our kettlebell up straight in front of us and we squat down, shoulders back, head up, stand up, right? The difference is no lever, different type of core engagement, right? So you can probably get more out of using a heavier kettlebell with that exercise than you could using a heavier dumbbell. The next version of the kettlebell squat that we're gonna talk about is the really abtastic version of the kettlebell squat. And this is called the single kettlebell front squat. We just call it the front squat. Usually if we're using two kettlebells, we will then call that a double front squat. So we're gonna get the kettlebell up, clean it into position, rack position, arm out to the side, feet pointed, generally straight ahead, unless you have some other sport specific reason for turning your feet out. Squat down, elbow to the inside, lean back away from the weight, head up, chest up, roll your shoulder back, drive all the way up. Because you're holding the kettlebell on one side of your spine, you will get more con core contraction out of the opposite side of your spine. Because the kettlebell is in front of your body, you will also be getting contraction from the back of your body. It's pulling that way, your body is pulling that way. So, you'll notice the kettlebell fits nicely in this rack position. We can rely on our bone and our skeletal structure to hold this in place. 
With a dumbbell, it's different because the dumbbell is pushing straight down. It is not an offset center of mass. It's a little bit harder to do it correctly. Uh, the kettlebell gives you something to lean back against. It's going that way, you go that way. You can lean against it, which allows you to work your spine a little bit straighter, a little bit stronger. With the dumbbell, if you have good technique going in, you will probably keep good technique throughout. If you have bad technique, the dumbbell will not encourage you to get better technique. That is the beauty of the kettlebell. So can you do all the exercises the same? Yes. Is the effect the same? Eh? No? Not really? Maybe? No. Uh, this has been Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we've been talking about three versions of the kettlebell and the dumbbell front squat series. <laughs>